In this Mass Effect Legendary Edition Tips and Tricks Guide, 10 Things All Players Should Know, I'll be talking about several things that can make your Mass Effect 1 experience much better. Mass Effect 1 is an action-packed RPG with multiple skills, weapons, and armor customizations to strengthen your squad. You can save yourself a lot of time by understanding the basic concepts of how the game works and what you should be doing in specific scenarios. In Mass Effect Legendary Edition, players will choose their military specialization or class, which will determine the way they play the game from start to finish. They will then select the skills or talents and abilities for their character, as well as the weapons, armor, and mods to improve their builds. Despite how straightforward Mass Effect 1 seems, there are a couple of strategies that are relevant when it comes to choosing the right class, as well as finishing quests in order to gain the right amount of XP and successfully fighting enemies. I'll be dividing this guide into three major sections, specifically character creation, character advancement, and combat. There are a total of six classes to choose from in Mass Effect, each with their own set of specialties and talents. These are classified as Combat, Tech, and Biotic. Combat specialists excel in dealing raw firepower damage thanks to their various weapon proficiencies. Tech specialists hack and debuff enemies to interrupt their tactics, and lastly, Biotic specialists capitalize on manipulating Mass Effect fields in order to immobilize targets. Soldiers are combat specialists because they can masterfully wield all weapons. As such, they have the highest weapon damage output of any class regardless of their proximity from the enemy. Soldiers also have the highest durability since they are the only class that can equip heavy armor. Additionally, they have high HP and can naturally regenerate it at a faster rate. The Soldier is a good starter class if you intend to go for a full shooter build. Engineers are tech specialists who hack into computer systems and repair the Mako, which is a vehicle used for exploring planets. In combat, their forte lies in debuffing enemies by weeping the effectiveness of their weapons and shields. They can only wear light armor, making it imperative that they stay away from enemies. The Engineer is an ideal class if you wish to disrupt the tactical strategies of your opponents. Adepts are biotic specialists who utilize mass effect force fields in order to employ crowd control techniques and to disable enemies while dealing massive amounts of damage. Like the Engineer, they can only equip light armor. The Adept is a good class to play if you wish to throw and lift enemies off the ground in order to make them vulnerable and useless in combat. Infiltrators are combat and tech specialists who are masters of quickly eliminating and disabling enemies at mid and long range distances. Unlike engineers, they focus on a multitude of skills including a mix of decryption and firepower. The Infiltrator is an excellent class to play if you prefer to deal multiple headshots from afar thanks to their sniper rifle proficiency. Moreover, their survivability is notable since they can wear medium armor. Vanguards are combat and biotic specialists who rush towards enemies and unlike infiltrators, they can take them down quickly and aggressively at close range. They can also equip medium armor and they can further enhance their durability with biotic abilities. The Vanguard is an ideal class if you intend to distract and to run near enemies in order to deal burst damage up close with a shotgun. Sentinels are tech and biotic specialists who make use of advanced healing and debuffing abilities to fully support their squad in combat. I wouldn't recommend the Sentinel class if you're new to Mass Effect 1 because it's difficult to master. Most of the time, you'll be relying on squad mates or companions to inflict high firepower damage. Additionally, you'll hang back trying to execute tech and biotic abilities, since you'll only have access to light armor. Note that you cannot change classes, so be sure to select the one you're interested in playing the most. Additionally, you have the option to import your character from this game to Mass Effect 2 and 3, so you can continue playing the same class. The four weapons that are available to you in Mass Effect 1 are the pistol, assault rifle, shotgun, and sniper rifle. In the Legendary Edition, the accuracy and damage penalties from the original game associated with equipping weapons that certain classes have no proficiency in has been abolished. This means that you're free to use any of these four weapons regardless of the class you choose. However, improving weapon performance via talents is still present. For example, if you're an engineer, you only have proficiency with a pistol. To enhance its accuracy, you'll have to put sufficient talent points into its corresponding pistol talent. If you were to switch to a sniper rifle, which you're not well trained to use, you can still shoot it, but you won't get additional accuracy and damage perks since they don't possess the sniper rifle talent. Because of this, it's best to stick with weapons your class is proficient in, so you don't miss out on these bonuses. Among the four weapons, the pistol is the most versatile because it's well balanced, has high damage per shot, shots before overheating, and accuracy attributes. Note that in this game, you don't use ammo. Instead, it utilizes the shots before overheating stat to determine the number of shots a weapon can fire before it becomes unusable in order to disperse heat. After cooling down for a few seconds, you'll be able to use the same weapon again. What's also great about the pistol is that all classes are proficient in using it and enhancing its features. Before you start playing the game, you'll decide which auto level up option to choose, whether it should be off, squad only, or squad and player. I highly advise turning this off since it's much better to manually add talent points to the talents you wish to rank up. This goes for both Shepard and squad mates. If you turn auto level up on, points will automatically be allocated to all talents even for those you don't want to improve, leaving you with an unoptimized build and squad composition. As an example, for classes that possess more than one combat talent, such as soldiers and vanguards, auto level up will equally distribute points to all these talents. 
In effect, you will not be able to immediately gain access to weapon abilities like Marksman and Carnage for pistols and shotguns, respectively, thereby losing out on precious accuracy, heat reduction, and damage buffs at earlier levels. As Commander Shepard, you will recruit a total of six squad mates. Most of them are available in the first three hours of the game. It's essential to talk to all of them at every main quest or mission in order to cultivate deeper and lasting relationships, which will impact the entire story. The more interaction you have with them, the more XP you'll get. Additionally, being enthusiastic and supportive about their thoughts and decisions will eventually lead into developing romantic relationships. However, at the end of Mass Effect 1, you can only have one love interest. It is imperative to recruit all six companions so you don't miss out on any of the character developments. One certain squad mate is in the Artemis Tau Cluster, so be sure to recruit them first before moving on to the other missions outside of the Citadel. Note that you can only bring two squad mates at a time when you explore planets and accomplish quests. If you choose a class that doesn't have electronics and decryption talents, make sure to bring a squad mate or two with these skills. Maxing out either talent is necessary. Electronics allow you to hack locked objects like computers while increasing shield strength for enhancing survivability. Decryption lets you use Omnigels to override security systems in order to gain access to locked containers if you can't hack your way through. The more you unlock systems and containers, the higher the extra XP you obtain. Moreover, you'll also get weapons, armor, and mods that are equally useful in improving your character's capabilities. When you explore other planets, your squad will ride in the Mako vehicle, which protects you from harmful environments. Frequently, you will face enemies that will target and damage the hull. Ranking up the Electronics Talon also repairs a larger portion of the Warnot Mako. Another way of increasing your squad's XP is to complete as many assignments as possible. In the Legendary Edition, upon choosing the Classic Mode, level 50 is no longer the cap so you can exceed that number. This will help you a lot more points into ranking up your talents and unlocking abilities. I recommend finishing a lot of assignments after gathering all six squad mates. This way, your entire squad will be more prepared in dealing with bosses when you continue other missions. In the Legendary Edition, the inventory size has been increased, but this doesn't mean that you shouldn't manage it. In between missions, assignments, and explorations, you will accumulate a ton of stuff in the form of weapons, armor, and mods. Instead of being penalized for exceeding the allowable weight capacity, you'll be forced to convert said items into Omnigels. Make sure to sell most of these for credits, which is the game's currency, to the Normandy Requisitions Officer beforehand, rather than scrambling to get rid of new materials you've gathered. As you play more, you'll be able to afford manufacturer licenses, which will give you access to purchase higher quality gear from merchants. Additionally, it's also important to maximize the capacity of metagels you can carry because you'll be using this a lot to heal yourself. HP recovery doesn't come naturally except for the Soldier class. One of the biggest improvements in the remaster involves utilizing the Mako in combat. It's no longer essential to leave the vehicle to attack hordes of enemies yourself in order to gain extra XP. Using the Mako's guns or shooting with your own weapons will yield the same amount. As such, it's best to capitalize on the Mako's cannons and machine guns as these will effectively and efficiently eliminate enemies due to their sheer power. Weapons and armor can sometimes be purchased from merchants or obtained from locked containers. The Roman numerals beside the equipment's name indicates its level. To enhance your gear, you'll have to keep switching to better versions of weapons, ammo, and armor mods. Weapon mods improve your weapon's accuracy and stability, whereas ammo mods focus on dealing different damage types such as raising your shield bypass capability and inflicting extra damage against synthetics or robotic enemies. Both weapon and armor levels and mods are available to Shepard and squad mates. Make sure to upgrade all of these before diving into missions and assignments to ensure that you're more than ready to kill strong and weak enemies alike. When you take two squad mates with you, make sure to select those with skills you don't have. As a soldier, it's advisable to pick one squad mate who is a tech specialist and another who uses biotic abilities. This is so you're prepared to disable and to immobilize your enemies, thereby making encounters much more manageable. When you're in combat, it's very important to utilize the tactics HUD. This feature allows you to pause the game in order to identify the squad's best course of action. From the Tactics HUD UI, you can command Shepard and your squad mates by swapping to the right weapons and choosing abilities to weaken targets. Shields is the main armor in Mass Effect 1. What usually happens is that this protective layer gets damaged and depleted first before the character's HP, but there are some deadly mods like the Proton Rounds which penetrate armor in order to diminish said HP. This is where hiding behind cover becomes a huge help to protect yourself from incoming attacks. These covers can be walls or big scattered objects where you can crouch from. Moreover, shooting from a crouched position also increases the accuracy of your weapon. Note that you won't have to destroy the enemy's shields in order to hit them with your tech or biotic abilities. On the other hand, they can also do the same to you. Between the two, biotic abilities are very annoying since you will get stunned for a couple of seconds, which can result in a matter of life and death. In cases when you must run towards an enemy or an adjacent cover, you'll be making use of storm speed. This is expendable and consequently you'll experience fatigue which slows down movement. Because of this, it is essential to prevent this from creeping up by running in short bursts, otherwise you become vulnerable to enemy attacks. Knowing these 10 tips and tricks will help you persevere in tricky situations. It will allow you to pursue succeeding encounters with ease as you learn how to effectively utilize the strengths of your entire squad. 
Stay tuned for more guides for Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and be sure to check out the Mass Effect Legendary Edition wikis if you have questions about the game.